Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison, President of Chiropractic Biophysics Seminars and Technique and President of Chiropractic Biophysics Nonprofit, the Spine Research Foundation. For those of you that don't know me, I'm an educator in the chiropractic profession, but I'm really a highly published researcher. Uh, I've authored more than uh, 160, co-authored more than 160 scientific peer-reviewed publications that cover a variety of healthcare disorders related to the spine for patient populations today. I've authored seven textbooks that are used uh, around the world for chiropractic education. And uh, I, I'm really, and not to float my own boat, but I, I just want you to know who I am. I'm really one of the most respected chiropractic educators and researchers in today's profession. Uh, certainly there's people uh, that have done more than myself, uh, but there's certainly a lot of people that don't have my uh, clinical armamentarium in terms of a scientific forte. And I, I bring this up about who I am because I'm so excited to share this particular presentation with you today about a brand new pillow that's hit the market. And I do have to fully disclose my involvement. I'm not a patent holder on this pillow, but I am one of the designers and testers of this pillow. Uh, I personally do wholesale this pillow uh, to chiropractors. So I do have a financial investment in it. But that being said, I don't personally put my name and my background reputation on a product that I'm not totally satisfied with from a clinical but also a scientific perspective. I'm here to introduce the Denerol pillow to you. Uh, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Adrian Denewald of Sydney, Australia, is really the brainchild behind this. But several of us, including myself, have been involved in helping with the design process, the intimate details of, of what the pillow should try to attain, and then the testing of this pillow. And I'm happy to say it's finally here after a three-year pro uh, process. Uh, I've already received many, many inquiries asking me about the design features and the functionality of the pillow, so I thought I'd put together this hour-long presentation to introduce it to you. And I know an hour-long presentation can be you know, difficult to, to follow through. You know, you can skip through the, uh, you know, some of the details and get to the point where you really want to, but the reality of it is I'm going to cover the ins and outs of the pillow in this presentation. Now, if, if you're a healthcare provider, at the end, I'll talk to you about getting on board as a wholesale pillow provider. If you're a consumer out there, we'll talk to you about the resources available for you to purchase this pillow and become a user of the Denerol pillow. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna give you a background of, of why we need a, a pillow like this. First of all, sleeping is one of the, if not the most important part of your day. If you don't sleep, you don't grow and repair. And, and that's not just in childhood, that's not growing in uh, vertical height. What we're talking about is the actual repair process of the human body. The more you sleep, the better you sleep, the better you're going to A, feel, and really that's driven by the human growth and repair and resetting processes. Everything from cell physiology, to uh, DNA repair, uh, to visceral system repair, to neurophysiological resets are occurring at night during sleep. So we've all woken up restful after a great night's sleep or a series of con consecutive night's sleep, but we've, we've all also woken up like feeling terrible after not achieving a good healthy night's sleep. The reality of it is there's no magic bullet, but there are things that we need to do to ensure and enhance the ability of, uh, of us to have a, a good, healthy night's sleep. One of the things that a pillow needs to do is it needs to be functional in its ability to support us in different positions. One of the primary things that people will do is sleep on their back. We call it supine sleeping. Now, even if you're a back or supine sleeper, that doesn't mean you're gonna sleep like that all night. You are going to move and toss and turn and roll around. However, most of the time, a back sleeper will fall asleep on their back and they like support under the head and neck. The problem is if you put too big of a support under the head and neck, it does two things. It shifts your head forward relative to your rib cage and it also flattens out the physiological neck curve that should be present that we call the cervical lordotic curvature. Now, 
Many people don't realize that what they're doing by sleeping on a very large pillow is actually a negative process for their body. They don't realize that they're shifting the head forward and flattening out the neck curve. And in fact, many people have a loss of the neck curve to begin with, and then the sleeping position makes that worse. So you wake up with a sore neck, a stiff neck, uh, you wake up, you feel like you've been snoring all night long because your airway is not opened up, etc. Well, one of the things we have to realize is the cervical lordotic curvature is a very important component of what I would call the, the natural sleep position. Now, oftentimes people claim that a pillow will support the neck curve or that it improves the neck curve. And they don't have any data. They, they just show somebody sleeping on it and they show a fabricated animation that they've developed to, to say that their pillow improves the neck curve. The reality of it is you actually want to test the pillow's ability to either A, support the neck curve or B, improve it. So showing up on the screen is a slide where we have a normal neck curve that we would call really the healthy shape of the neck from the side. And what you can see is we have a nice deep curve in the cervical spine where the neck vertebra bend backwards almost in a semicircular uh, position. So here's the jaw and the back of the teeth would be here. Here's my orbit or my eye socket and here's the skull. Now here's the top of the neck that we call cervical vertebra one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I need to have what we call a physiological lordotic curve. It means the curve bends backwards with a forward-facing convexity of the curve. Now that's a healthy position. It helps the neck muscles, it helps the ligaments, the discs, and it's even been shown to affect neurophysiology when you have this proper position in your cervical curve. Consequently, or, or oppositely, when we lose the cervical curve, bad things can happen. Deleterious effects can occur over time. They may not occur in everybody, but by and large, statistically, they incur, occur in more people than they do not. For example, here's somebody that has a loss of their cervical lordotic curvature, and over time, their spine is broken down. They've got spinal arthritis and disc disease. Their altered curve is shown in the red line. The idealized curve is shown in this green line. We get thin discs, which start to affect the nerves that go down the arm. It starts to create muscle pains, tensions, headaches, a number of things like that. The deal is I'm not here to give you a dissertation on the neck curve. I am here to tell you that it's really important physiologically. That's why we're designed to have it. The reality of it is it is part of our anatomical design and I'm one of the top published chiropractic researchers in this field. And arguably I likely have more publications just studying the neck curve than the majority of scientific researchers out there. It's just one of my f uh, favorite fields and my passions. We've studied this from you know, an outcome assessment and, and what it does with people when they have altered curves, things like that. So take my word for it. The evidence is really rather clear that an altered curve affects your health and well-being. Now, from a sleep perspective, it's known that if I lose my cervical curve or if I have uh, anterior translation, that can affect my airway. And oftentimes problems with the mid and the upper cervical spine do correlate to the presence of sleep disorders, for example, like sleep apnea. Now, not in every single case will a person have sleep apnea that has a loss of the cervical curve, but there's been quite a lot of research done on this showing that the cervical spine, its biomechanics and alignment does influence the, the uh, outcomes of sleep apnea in terms of how severe it is and how common it, it is in uh, different patient populations. For example, this study came out in the European Spine Journal in 2014 and they identified after reviewing 17 papers that the alignment of the suboccipital, the upper cervical spine, dramatically influences sleep apnea in different patient populations. They were really looking at it from an injury and also a surgical perspective, but some of these 17 papers also looked at non-surgical candidates as well. Here's what we also know from research in, in the literature. This one comes out of the uh, famous journal Spine in 2011. And when, I, when I'm saying the famous journal, these are peer-reviewed scientific journals. This particular study showed 
that the amount of extension, the amount of curvature in your mid and upper cervical spine on x-ray is clinically correlated to the diameter of your airway. So shown in these graphs here is the angle of the cervical curve in the upper neck versus the postural position of the head and neck and then over here versus the diameter of the airway. And basically what they're doing is they're just looking at the, uh, the sagittal plane diameter of the, the airflow passage. And what happens is, we'll, we'll see, when you lose your mid and upper neck curve, it closes down or subtly closes down the airways and the sphincters that control the airway. My uh, veloepiglottic and my veloglossal sphincter. And in lay terms, what does that mean? Well, it means the nasal air uh, passage and the throat or oral uh, air passage. So we know from anatomical studies and biomechanical studies that the angle of your cervical curvature and the position of your head and neck in space actually affect the diameter of the airway. So if I were to design a pillow and I were to test that pillow, I would, I would at least want to make sure it keeps the head and neck in a neutral position and it at least has an effective uh, ability to open up or keep the airway at the same amount that you are in the neutral position. The worst thing to do would be to change this curvature and flatten it out, which would then change the diameter of the airway, meaning you're going to have a harder time respirating when you're at rest, when you're sleeping. Okay. Now, just to continue, I just want to show you some of the background studies on this to get you on board with the concept of the dental pillow. This one came out in the chiropractic literature uh, by Dobson et al. This came out in a peer-reviewed chiropractic journal called the Journal of Vertebral Subluxation Research. And in chiropractic, this is considered a, a good quality professional peer-reviewed journal. Here's what the, the author did. Retrospectively looked at a, a cohort of pa uh, patients with sleep apnea and then also looked at their lateral cervical curvatures on x-ray. And here's what Dobson identified. The vast majority of the patients with sleep apnea have kyphotic mid and upper cervical curvatures. He, he's concluded that it's apparent that people with obstructive sleep apnea excuse me, syndrome can be expected on average to have an upper cervical kyphotic spinal alignment on x-ray. And he shows that this can affect the positions of the palates, especially if you have a lack of muscle tone in the palates, and it can affect the airway diameter. So it, it's known in, in research studies, again, that when I lose my cervical curvature, specifically in my mid and upper neck, and if I have altered head positions, this will affect my airflow. It will affect my bio, biomechanics. We've known this really, really for a long time. This particular anatomical study is on children and really on uh, uh, human fetuses. And when we look at this, pillows aren't so great for really, really young you know, uh, babies and infants. The, the, the problem is, the, the baby and the infant has a very large head compared to the rest of the body. In fact, newborns have a head that's 25% of their body mass, whereas adults have a head that's about 7.5% of the body mass. So I'm not going to say that a pillow should be used in very, very young uh, situations like from 0 to 2 years of age. I think that's a bad thing, but what we can learn from studies on infants and, and of course developing toddlers is the fact that when they lose their cervical curve or adopt positions of head and neck flexion, it will again affect their airway. Uh, this particular study came out of an anatom uh, anatomical journal in 1994 called Acta Anatomia. It's a Scandinavian peer-reviewed anatomy journal. And Schatz et al, what they identified is that when we put an infant, a baby's head and neck, into a position where it straightens out the mid and the upper neck curve, it in flat fact closes down both of the airway sphincters, the veloglossal and the veloepiglottic sphincters. Here's what they uh, concluded after uh, actual dissections and studying uh, cross-sections in anatomy and cross-sections on x-ray. They identified that one of the most important anatomical parameters found to facilitate the switch from nasal to oral ventilation in human infants is a cervical extension creating a physiological lordosis of the neck. 
This results in an opening of the veloglossal and the veloepiglottic sphincters. It opens the airway so you can actually breathe. Now, here's the cross section of a, sorry, a, a, basically a cadaveric fetus. And what they're looking at is they're showing that, that this actually closes down the airway. This is the veloepiglottic sphincter and it's closed down. Why? Well, it's closed down because the human cervical curve is not in there. Anybody that's out there that says a kyphotic neck is good for you, I'm here to tell you they don't understand anatomy. It's a scientific fact, not a theory, that when you flex your neck, you close down airways. This is why in CPR, everybody that learns emergency medical services, they're trained to put the head and neck into a slight extension position which opens the airway. It's an anatomical fact. I need you to understand that. So the reality of it is, if you lose your neck curve, you're affecting airflow. This is a huge thing when we talk about sleep positions where people adults and even kids we're in the habits of stacking pillows behind our head and neck when i'm sleeping on my back which forces my head forward and flexes my neck this is a bad thing okay to continue this uh, my colleagues one of my uh, uh, chiropractic biophysics instructors and one of one of the the, the premier uh, clinicians that i would argue is in denver colorado one of the best chiropractors out there is uh, D uh dr uh, evan katz and forgive me he's in boulder colorado sorry about that evan uh, he's in uh, the boulder chiropractic area him and his wife uh, dr shauna katz and dr evan katz they spearheaded a very very interesting uh clinical cohort uh study they took consecutive uh, uh, patient participants that had loss of the cervical curvature, and what they did is they did MRIA, which looks at the uh, blood flow pixel intensity on MRIs. And what they did is they said, you know what, we, we want to investigate whether or not putting a deep cervical curvature in somebody's neck affects the blood flow to different parts of the brain. Okay, specifically posterior regions of the brain, the lower part of the brain, the cerebellum, the brain stem, et cetera. Is there an improvement in pixel intensity on MRIA when I have a deep cervical curvature? And in fact, what was identified in seven participants is that when I take somebody from a supine MRI position and put a cervical lordotic orthotic to enhance the cervical curve, the denerol was used in this particular project. When the person is lying on the denerol, they have an enhanced pixel intensity on MRIA indicating a greater blood volume to those areas of the brain that were imaged. Now this is a pilot project, but it's really a groundbreaking uh, uh, publication in my opinion. It was published in 2019 in the journal Brain Circulation. And the title of the project is Increase in Cerebral Blood Flow Indicated by Increased Cerebral Artery Area, that's the volume, and pixel intensity on brain magnetic resonant angiogram, MRIA, following correction of the cervical curve on the dental orthotic. Now th this is a very important thing. I mean, obviously blood flow to the brain would be important for a number of things. Uh, neurophysiological improvements, uh, uh, exchange of uh, axoplasm uh, and cytoplasm like waste materials from biosynthesis, etc. So, you know, if, if you can't get rid of metabolic waste, you're not going to grow and repair. And the exchange of oxygen and nutrients with blood volume, blood flow is a very important component of this. Also, we, we know that the blood obviously brings nutrients for energy. So in order to have neurotransmitter production, which is really uh, basically the energy of the neuron, uh, you have to have a prop, proper blood flow to that. If you don't, Areas of the brain, they're not going to die, but they actually hibernate. It's something that we call ischemic penumbra. And you can look that up if you're interested in that. But really, it's uh, what's called cerebral hibernation theory. Uh, the example of this, if you've ever felt like foggy or cloudy, you know, maybe you didn't get a, get a great night's sleep or, you know, you're just overexerted. Your, your brain is just in a cloud, in a fog, and you go to do tasks and you don't function as, as efficiently at those tasks. Maybe it's a test, maybe it's 
performance in, in your job, whatever it is, you're just in a fog. Well, it's not that your brain neurons are dead, they're just in a state of hibernation. And the reality of it is, if you increase oxygenation, increase blood flow to those areas, they wake up, they become stimulated. Uh, they light up on the MRIA, they show higher pixel intensities. So in my opinion, that's what's likely happening in here. We're getting a bigger blood flow to the, the brain, we're seeing greater pixel intensity, I think it's probably going to wake up areas of the brain if you were to test that facet of it. The other thing is, here's what we know when we improve the cervical curvature in patients, okay? Just to give you the background, we know that by improving an abnormal cervical curvature in patient populations, we know that the ones that get corrective care are the ones that improve in their pain, their disability, their functional measurements, and their neurophysiological measurements. So I'm trying to tie this all in uh, uh, together for you. The fact of the matter is my group and I, uh, my team and I out of Cairo University and Sharhar University over at the United Arab Emirates, we've published a number of randomized trials verifying that when we correct the cervical curve in patients with different types of neck pain and disabilities that the people that get corrected are the ones that do better at long-term outcome. And these studies are published in the literature. This one was published in 2018 in the journal BMC and Musculoskeletal Disorders. This one was published in the European Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation in 2017. And both of the studies, what we did is we took people with abnormal curves like this and anterior head translation and when we corrected the neck curve, these are the people that got the best outcomes at one year follow-ups. So we know that the cervical curve is very important, not just for sleep and airway, but for overall pain and disability and neurophysiological measurements that have been tested. The last part of the equation, the last study that I'll go through with you in this manner to set the stage for this new pillow is the fact that we've identified that forward head posture positions are not so good for you. Now, if you just shift your head forward and you bend your upper neck backwards, that can actually have an opening effect on the airway. However, biomechanically, that head being forward is not good for you either. So I'm going to submit to you that sleeping in a position with your head forward is not a good idea. Uh, number one, it's gonna set the stage for you to have anterior head translation when you're standing and seated because the postural positional habits that you actually perform regularly become cemented in you over time. Okay, so here's what we did recently, my team and I, uh, the same authors and I from uh, overseas, uh, Professor Ibrahim Mustafa and his team and myself, we recently had an article published in the journal Gait and Posture in 2020, this year, January. We identified that even if you have no symptoms, asymptomatic people, if your head is forward, you will have altered movement patterns, you'll have altered eye motor or muscle control, you'll have altered balance, and you'll have an altered ability to perform uh, what we call tasks in space and come back to a neutral starting position. We call this sensory motor control measurements. How your sensory system influences your motor or muscle output system. Okay, so before I even do a task, I'm processing information in my environment. I'm looking, I'm, I'm uh, you know, visualizing things, I'm auditory, auditorily assessing things, I'm even smelling things, I'm processing multiple things, and then I go to move. That, that's the sensory system driving the motor system or movement system. What we found out is the position of your head and neck in space with your head forward negatively impairs that system. The other thing we found was when people's heads are forward, it affects your autonomic nervous system, your fight or flight response. Your autonomic nervous system was found to be hyperactive with the head forward. So I'm here to tell you that the cervical curve and forward head posture are very important variables to consider in a sleep position, which is the whole background reason for the Denroll pillow, which is why I'm uh, uh, providing the presentation like this. So here's the concept. Forward head posture and loss of the cervical curve 
is likely damaging to your health. Now, I could have just started with this slide, but what I did is I provided evidence for that. As a scientist and a researcher, I personally demand that, and I hope you guys do too. Now, if you want to skip that introduction, feel free to and go right to this slide and go, okay, forward head posture and loss of the curve is damaging to your health. Why have it when you sleep? Here's what we know. An imbalance in the spine and posture is a precursor to recurrent functional and structural problems. I gave you the background on that. This is the summary slide. So here's the deal. Supine sleep postures, that means lying on your back, I think need to account for the anterior head translation that people have, and they need to also support the cervical curve. Here's the deal. You see all kinds of contoured pillows out there and all kinds of you know, different design of pillows and they all make the same claim. They all claim to support the head and neck posture and they all claim to support the cervical curve, but they've never done a study showing that in most cases. In fact, I don't know a pillow that's actually shown that it can truly improve the head and neck alignment when you're lying on a, a pillow versus standing up, okay? So what, what, do, what do these pillows actually show? Well, they make claims, they call them clinical claims. And you know, oftentimes the consumer out there falls for that. Things need to be scientifically studied and tested, okay? And you need to look at the background of what these pillows are actually doing. So here's a number of supine positions that you can do. Look at this contour pillow. It's designed to support the curve, but what does it really do? When you take an x-ray of somebody like this on this pillow, what do you think happens on the standardized contoured pillow? Well, look, it's shifting the head forward, the ears way in front of the shoulders, and it's not supporting the neck curve. If you were to take an x-ray of this, and I'll show you this, it's not going to look that great, you know? Pillows that, that have a big backdrop or a hole in the center are way better at supporting the cervical curve, but almost all pillows have something supporting the head and neck behind them when you're lying supine. So it cannot support the neutral lordotic curvature and it cannot totally improve anterior head translation. The only pillow that can is one that has no support underneath the back of the head. The reality of it is when you lie on your mattress and just go check this, you, your torso is heavier than your head, so your rib cage sinks into the mattress, which then sticks your head forward. So already by lying supine on the mattress, your head is shifted forward without a pillow and your neck curve is flattening. This is the challenge with sleep pillows and ergonomic positions in the back line or supine line position. So the idea is, is this, all pillows make claims of superiority we should actually look at those and test those. You know, is a pillow suitable for different sleeping postures, supine and sideline? Does the pillow actually relieve headache and neck pain and pressure when you're supine? That should be documented and studied. Does the pillow offer superior head and neck and shoulder su uh, support? And does the pillow actually improve sleep quality in true sleep uh, quality studies? Now, each one of these requires a different study. And I, I'm not here to tell you we've answered all this with the Denaro pillow, but we are involved in multiple clinical trials on this right now. We've got multiple ones that are in testing phase. We have a couple that are in IRB approval phase and we have a couple that we have data already done for. We're trying to test each one of these components. I will tell you this, we know that we're suitable for different uh, supine versus sideline sleeping. I'm here to go through that with you. We know that we can properly support the cervical curve and we can open the airway when you're on the dental pillow as a supine or back sleeper. We've got data for that from our preliminary studies. The study is not published, but we have preliminary data. I can share that with you. So what I wanna do is introduce the new Denaroll pillow to you. Uh, we have patents on this uh, particular pillow uh, through Adrian Denewald in uh, Sydney, Australia through Denaroll Industries. Again, I'm not a patent holder, but I am one of the design uh, experts and one of the testers, if you will. Here's the deal. Here is one of the main components of the pillow. We'll talk a lot about that. But this flip out section, this is where your head and neck drop back to the bed. So when you flip this out, there is nothing under the back of the skull, underneath your occiput. The skull is actually touching the bed. 
That allows for complete correction of the anterior head translation. While I'm lying over this section, this is the unique feature of this pillow. It has a soft version of the dental orthotic. Now the original dental orthotic is a prescription orthotic that we've tested its ability to improve and enhance the cervical curve and correct anterior head translation. The problem is two things for a patient. Number one, it's a prescription orthotic only. Number two, it's too firm and too tall to sleep on. You're not going to fall asleep for very long on that device. It's not designed for sleeping. It's designed to correct the neck curve. So what we did is we took that dental orthotic and we developed a soft viscoelastic version of it. Now viscoelastic means nicely compressible with pressure over time. It's deformable as you lay over it, it deforms and then it supports your neck curve while you're lying on it. I'll show you that. So in here is the dental orthotic that's underneath the top of this pillow. When you lie on this, you can position this down in the mid and lower part of the neck and it allows the head to drop backwards. Now, if you don't want that much head translation posteriorly, then you position this more in the mid cervical curvature. Here's the deal. The patented dental insert will effectively support the cervical curve while you're sleeping supine. The surrounding support surfaces will cradle and comfort you and you'll feel like you're in this nice enclosed quiet, you know, kind of a soft cloud, if you will. I've been in this. It's really nice. Like if you don't like noise when you're sleeping, sometimes rooms are noisy. You can hear traffic going by, whatever it is. This kind of nicely protects the ears. It doesn't compress you, but I've been in this pillow. I can tell you, I find it very comforting. The flip out section, the, the nice thing about this is, if you're not a supine sleeper or you're tired of sleeping on your back in the middle of the night and you want to turn positions, what you do is you just flip this in quickly while you, you uh, change positions and then you roll on your side and that supports the head and neck when you're sidelined. We'll talk about this in more detail coming up. The dental pillow. Number one, it prevents and corrects forward head posture when you're lying on it. Number two, it supports the cervical curve when you're lying over the device in a proper position. This improved lordotic curve likely improves the airway, I'll show you that, and it also improves sleep comfort. And we're in fact testing that part of the equation. But so far in our preliminary trials with people using this, they're saying that it's very comfortable and they like this position. And we're doing a very large cohort trial testing this in a sample of, of a few hundred participants that are actually uh, CBP chiropractors. Okay, so here's the dental insert. This goes inside the pillow. You can see it here. The dental insert is underneath the top layer of this pillow. This is where your shoulders would be. This is where your mid and low neck would be and then your head would drop over this. Now, every dental pillow that we sell comes with the soft dental insert for comfort. Okay, the soft one is very nice and compressible. We didn't want it to be too firm to affect, you know, the pressure in the back of your neck. Some people don't like that. And in fact, if you're not used to having a cervical curve, that can be a little uncomfortable on the first, uh, the first few times you're lying on the pillow. So there is a learning curve to the pillow. Now, after you get used to the soft pillow, or the soft dental insert, you may want to upgrade to the firm dental insert. This will give you more support and likely enhance the ability of the pillow to, to effectively support and improve the cervical curve while you're lying on it. Okay, so this is the way the pillow is designed. This is the uh, patented dental insert in there, but it's not the prescribed orthotic. It's not the firm, tall density version of it. This is the soft viscoelastic version of it. The combined increased cervical curvature and neutral or no anterior head translation is likely going to lead to the following. Reduced muscle tension, improved airway, better breathing, and also if you look at the, the Dr. Katz et al. study, improved blood flow to different areas of the brain while you're lying on this position. Now yes, we need to test the dental pillow for that, but it's the same thing. It's improved cervical curvature and no head translation correlated to the improved pixel intensity on the MRI angiogram. So 
I'm confident in making that claim. When you're lying on this pillow, you're likely going to have improved blood flow, improved airway, and a reduction in the muscle tension just simply because it's a better postural position. The uniqueness of the dental pillow is this patented uh, area that comes in and out, the lid, if you will. When I'm supine, that lid is out, it flips out, and it's attached to the pillow. When I lie on my side, that lid goes down. And I personally, I like to sleep both on my side and on my back. The deal is, I flip this in and I have this area that I can lie over. Now this is a very tall area of the pillow. If I'm a broad shouldered man, I can use this area of the pillow to side lie. It'll support my head and neck and my head will gently uh, lay over this area. The problem is if you're not a large male or if you don't have broad shoulders, this might be too tall for you. So what you have to do is you turn the pillow 90 degrees and you lie on one of the sides of the dental roll pillow. It supports your head and neck in the sideline position. Now you might go, oh, that's too cumbersome. We all wake up in the middle of the night and we all change positions. We're talking about a one second shift, maybe two if you're slow, right? I mean, come on, give me a break. I mean, I've heard all these things. Oh, you know, I don't wake up in the middle of the night. You totally wake up in the middle of the night, right? If you were to ever video you or watch uh, videotapes of people sleeping, they roll around and they move positions. They fall asleep in a neutral position where they're comfortable on their back or on their side, but then they're moving as they go. So we wanted to design this pillow in terms of functional performance, and I don't think there's anything else like that. So here's the way this works. The contoured design allows head and neck support while side sleeping. There's a ribbed contour surface that provides comfort and cooling for a good night's sleep. So we had to pr uh, put in these ridges and depressions uh, because of the fact that we used what's called a closed cell foam and a closed cell foam is not as breathable as an open cell or an open density foam and the the reason we chose to uh, chose a closed cell fo foam is it has better viscoelastic tendencies and it's more uh, uh, hypo uh, aller allergenic it's more hygienic you don't get the you know dust mites and gross stuff getting into that pillow so if you have a closed cell foam pillow it gets pretty gross over time because you know skin particles and cells and dust mites get in there a closed cell fo foam is way better from a hygiene and an allergen perspective so knowing that we wanted to design it like that we also had to design it for breathability so it has these nice contours in there which are quite comfortable, but it allows a cooling effect if, if you heat up at night like I do when, when I'm sleeping, okay? So we know that we're going to lie on um, a side, one of our sides, and support uh, with this insert the lateral part of the skull, right? You don't want this out when you're sideline. The other unique feature of the dental pillow is I'm showing this, uh, the pillow, you're looking at it uh, straight on from the front of the pillow, not a bird's eye, but I'm looking at the front part of the pillow it, where your head and neck would lie over. So if I look at this and I call this my reading left versus my reading right, the general pillow left versus right has two different heights. We have a 90 millimeter height in this version and a 110 millimeter version our height uh, on this side in this version. And I say this version because there's two sizes of the dental pillow right now that I'll talk about. People don't understand why we did this. I get a lot of questions. Why did we design different heights on the left and right sides of the dental pillow? Here's why. If you're a side sleeper and you're a small framed person, I don't want a large, bolster object underneath my neck. It's uncomfortable. It'll shift my head over too far and it creates a kinking effect. So for a shorter person, we actually want a shorter height on that side. So what you would do is you'd just get used to sleeping on one side of that dental pillow if you're a shorter person. For example, if you're like under five foot six, you would likely sleep on the short side of that dental pillow. Conversely, if you're like five foot six, five foot nine and up, you might find it more comfortable to, to uh, sleep on the side of the dental pillow. In this version, my reading right 
of the pillow, the taller side. And you might go, well, which side's taller? Look at it, it's 20 millimeters taller. You'll figure it out. When you, when you look at the pillow, it's the right side that's taller, or if you're actually the pillow itself and you're in the neutral position, it's the left side uh, that, that is the taller side. But you'll figure it out because it's almost an inch taller, right? People go, how do I know? Well, look at it, sorry. Uh, the other thing is, if you're really, really a tall person and you need more support, then what you do is you side lie over the dental peak here. Uh, this is actually the tallest part of the pillow. Most people might find that too uncomfortable uh, unless you're actually a taller frame person. So we have two versions of side lying on the dental pillow based on heights that support your head and neck in the neutral position. The other thing we have, the back of the pillow, you'll notice it's the shallowest part of the pillow. Why did we do that? Well, we did that for two reasons. Number one, when you're side lying, and I have this area in my middle neck, we want the head to be able to drop over that and be nicely supported. Your skull is in fact left to right wider than your neck is. So you have to have a lower area for the head to, to lie on in order for the head and neck to be in the neutral position. Look at this woman lying on this. This nicely supports her in the neutral position where the center of the neck is lined up with the center of the face which is lined up with the center of the upper torso. That's one reason. The other reason that this area is the, the shortest or shallowest part of the pillow is if a patient or a person comes in with a head translation shifted to one side or the other. A CBP trained chiropractor, we look at that and we go, that's a problem. Your head should not be translated to one side. For example, I'm translated or shifting in with my head to the right. Well, if I were to lie on this part of the pillow, the back of the pillow, not on the sides, if I lie on my left side, my head is nicely allowed to shift or translate to the left. In chiropractic biophysics or CBP technique, we call that mirror image ergonomic sleeping. And CBP doctors will love this. We're, we're going to recommend some of our patients to try to sleep on this part of the pillow. Now at first you might go, oh, that's not comfortable. I don't have enough support. But as you get used to that, you're going to be sleeping in a postural position that helps correct your cervical spine alignment. This is an amazing pillow. We've got four different sleeping areas. We've got supine over the dental insert, We've got left and right side line, and then we've got super, or, uh, the back of the pillow side line. And the other thing is, if you wanted support underneath your head and neck, if, if you don't need improvement in, in your head posture, then you could use this part of the pillow itself. And so the, there's many facets and functional areas of this pillow, and that's why it's such a unique design. Uh, the other thing is I, I wanna share with you is that the pillow currently comes in two sizes. We have an adult large and a, an adult medium. Most people are gonna find that these two versions are adequate. However, if, if you're a very small framed adult, like a five foot or under, or if you're a child, you're going to find out that maybe the medium dental pillow is still a little bit too large for you. So we're going to be putting out a small version of the dental pillow. The trouble is this, honestly, to put out a brand new pillow and manufacture it in the way that this pillow has been manufactured, there's nothing quite like it on the market right now. It is a rather costly uh, pillow to design because of all the features in it and because we wanted to make it hypoallergenic and we wanted to have the closed cell foam. Uh, we also wanted the dental insert in there and all these things add to the cost of the pillow. So quite frankly, to design three different versions of this financially is a very challenging thing. So we had to wait for this, the small version of the dental pillow. The other thing is we're very sensitive to putting out a product that may or may not be good for children. We want to actually make sure that we get the size of the small dental pillow right for the majority of children and also the majority of small framed adults. So if you're like, gosh, I want the small, just bear with us. We're an ethical, honest company. We're not gonna put out a product that we're not totally happy with. So there's two reasons we haven't launched 
uh, the small version yet is we're still testing it. We want to make sure we get it right for pediatric and uh, uh, child populations and then for uh, smaller framed adults. But rest assured, the majority of us, here's my recommendation. If you're under five foot nine, like myself, you're gonna be on the medium, unless you really like a lot of support under the neck when you're sideline. If you're above five foot nine, you're gonna be on the large pillow. The other thing is, again, all the pillows Originally, initially, they come with the soft dental insert. If you find out that that's too soft for you over time, as you get used to the pillow, then you upgrade, uh, you just order that uh, uh, firm dental insert. So that's an upgradable option, right? Now, the meat and potatoes, I, I wanna share with you this. Uh, dental research and development on the pillow. Uh, my team and I, we've done uh, two projects currently. Uh, we've got informed consent and approval for these projects, and I just want to show you some preliminary uh, slides out of the, the projects that we've done. What we did uh, at, at a chiropractic convention where we had an x-ray facility, facility, we took participants that volunteered for this and signed informed consent, and what they did is they allowed us to take a neutral upright standing x-ray and then an on the, the uh, beta uh, type of the dental pillow, so the prototype of the dental pillow. And so shown here is the position for the setup on the dental position or dental pillow in front of the x-ray. And then what I've, uh, I am showing here, uh, this is actually, uh, and forgive me, I've got a little bit of a, a patch over uh, slide here and I'll just quickly edit this, it wasn't supposed to be there. And so even seasoned presenters make mistakes and there it's gone, so nobody saw that. And I'll even have uh, the videographer leave it in because I, I like a little comedy. Uh, here's on the pillow x-ray and here's neutral upright standing alignment. This person does not have a very good curvature in their neck and they have forward head translation. Here's the person on the pillow, one of the volunteer chiropractors on the pillow, and then here's the x-ray of them on the pillow. And notice the head and neck are in the neutral position. There's not hyperextension, but the pillow effectively supports the cervical curve and corrects or neutralizes the anterior head translation. Holy cow, I mean, look at that. Not only are we making a claim that the pillow supports the neck curve, but we actually tested and verified it. Can you imagine that? I mean, the reality of it is proof is in the pudding. This is improving the cervical curve. And again, it's not dramatic hyperextension. What it is, is it's nicely supporting the curve and head in the neutral position. And here's another uh, person uh, out of this particular trial. Look at this. This person does not have anterior head translation, but they have really a terrible mid and upper cervical curve. You lie them on the pillow, look at this. It, it is creating slight head extension, but by no means is that slight head extension on the pillow the reason that the neck curve is improved. The neck curve is improved because you're lying over this dental patented insert, right? So this does support the cervical curve and actually improves it while you're lying on it. Now we don't know if that leads to true post x-ray changes after 90 days of using the pillow. We're not making that claim. We're making the claim that when you lie on the pillow, it improves your cervical curve. You can verify this for yourself. If you're a doctor or you're a patient out there and you demand proof for yourself, go into an office and say, hey, I, I, I wanna have an, an x-ray of myself on this pillow to see what happens. And I'm here to guarantee you, you're going to see a positive improvement in your cervical lordotic curvature if you position this pillow in the right manner, right? So check this out. Here's another example out of this. And this is lying over the viscoelastic dental insert. Here's the neutral and here's the on-pillow x-ray. Now look at that. While you're lying on the pillow, it improves the cervical lordotic curvature. We have evidence for that. We're very happy with that. Other pillows make that claim, but they have no proof for that, okay? Now here's a recent update. We just got IRB approval uh, for a new project. Um, my good uh, friend and research uh, colleague, partner, Dr. Uh, Adrian Denewald, uh, went down to Atlanta and uh, himself and Dr. Rachel Stockwell down there, uh, they spearheaded a new trial on our behalf uh, for this dental pillow. And there's multiple researchers that are involved in this, but these are the two that were collecting the data in the MRI center down there. What we did is we looked at 
the Denerol pillow versus a standard contour pillow versus neutral in an MRI. So here's the three MRI positions and we have on the Denerol pillow in the middle on a standardized uh, contoured pillow, the ones that claim to support the cervical curve, and then we have the neutral MRI position. And the problem with the neutral MRI position, I, we know this, that they have a little bolster that goes behind the head and neck, so it's, it's already kind of pushing the head and neck forward, uh, so that's why it looks like it's doing that, but that's the position for a head and neck MRI. And then here's on the Denerol pillow, and then here's on that contoured pillow. And so shown, you, uh, shown here is our three test uh, setups. This is the Denerol pillow cut up because you couldn't fit the whole pillow in the MRI apparatus, so we had to cut the chunk out of the pillow that's really uh, the front part of the pillow for the effective part of it. And then here's the neutral setup, and then here's the standardized uh, pillow that's uh, like a contour pillow. And in, in the formal research project, we'll list exactly what pillow that is, but we're not trying to bash a certain brand name pillow. We're actually bashing the whole concept of what they're claiming all these pillows do. I don't care what brand it is, okay? The general pillow research and development, neutral versus on pillow MRI airway and curve changes. Now look at this. This is preliminary uh, evidence out of this particular uh, project. It's a pilot project and I've taken a couple uh, images to show you. This is uh, with no pillow, this is the standard MRI position. So we can look at the cervical curvature and we can look at the diameter of the airway. And then here's on the standard contour pillow, look what it does, it pretty much, I'm sorry I'm laughing, it actually doesn't do anything. I mean, it shifts the head further forward is what it does. It, it, it actually doesn't improve the neck curve. It might flatten it out a little bit, and it doesn't improve the airway. And then here's on the Denerol pillow, on the Denerol pillow. Notice the effective change in the cervical lordotic curvature and the improvement in head, head translation. And then here's the big one. Look, look at this. Look at the airway improvements. So this is on the Denerol pillow on the Denerol pillow versus, versus on a contoured pillow and really with no pillow. You can see there is a difference in the diameter and the volume of the airway here in these areas. The cervical curve is moved more posterior because of the extension and it opens up the airway. And here's the anatomical dissections from the 1994 study by Schatz et al. I'm showing you this is enhanced airway. This is on the pillow. It, it, it's not that the pillow is the magic you know, bullet. It's the position that it creates that is the, the, the reason that this is occurring. When you increase the cervical curve and you improve head translation, this is what happens. And so this is the uh, anatomical dissection out of the uh, Schatz 1994 study that I showed, and this is what's happening here in this person uh, in the MRI with the, the standardized pillow and with no pillow. So we're pretty happy to say that preliminarily, and this study is not done yet, but the preliminary evidence suggests to me that we're improving the diameter of the airway. Now obviously the position of the palate depends on muscle activation too, so we know it's not all just the position of the head and neck, because we've got to look at the myoelectric activity in the palate as well too, that plays a role. But we're really happy with this initial idea and this initial concept of the general pillow. We know it improves the cervical curve and head posture, and preliminarily, look what it does. It improves the volume of the airway when you're lying supine on this. So, long story short, the Denerol pillow, it has unique features. It is an effective pillow to support anterior head translation and the cervical lordotic curve when you're supine uh, on your back sleeping. It also has features to allow for proper support of the head and neck in sideline. It has two different heights of the pillow left versus right. It also has a back part of the pillow that allows a more shallow head and neck support, whether you want that for sleeping supine or you want that for correction of head and neck head translation when you're lying on your side.
there are unique features of this pillow, and hopefully you understand that. There are two sizes of the pillow, a medium and a large available currently right now. I went through that. What we'd love to do is we'd love to get healthcare providers on board with wholesale sailing these and selling these to the public. We'd love you to be able, able to uh, basically prescribe these pillows to your patient populations. We, we believe that they are a very important component of head and neck postural ergonomics in the sleep setting. We are continuing to do research like I've talked about. We will do a sleep quality comfort on, on this particular pillow, but don't let that stop you from using it. The majority of pillows out there on, on the market, they don't have any research that's published truly supporting what they do. We have preliminarily uh, uh, gone through data that supports the general pillow concept and we'll put uh, forth some investigations to test whether or not this is truly a, a pillow that improves sleep quality and quality of life aspects uh, with ergonomics and sleeping. That's on the way. Wholesale pricing to chiropractors and healthcare providers is available. If you're in the United States, the UK or Canada, here's the information up here. You go to idealspine.biz, uh, you email info at idealspine.com or you call us up at our phone number. If you're in Australia, New Zealand, Asia, what you do is you go to denroll.com or you e uh, email info at denroll.com and we'll get you on board with becoming a uh, wholesale provider for the pillow. We'll have proper marketing materials available. We'll have some nice uh, in-office brochures. We'll, we'll have this presentation made available to you. We'll just give you the presentation. It, it's not, you know, this is not something we want to keep to ourselves. We want to allow people to have access to this. We want you to teach this in a sleep ergonomic setting. So we'll make this presentation available to you. If you're a consumer, uh, a patient out there, we, we'd love you to, to uh, purchase this through your uh, healthcare provider. Uh, if you uh, don't do that, if you don't have one, we do allow direct purchases uh, through the consumer. If you're interested in that, here's some information for you out there. But really to test this product out for you, I would suggest you go to your provider's office and then just get it from them. They're on board with it. Uh, they, they know what they're doing. They can fit you properly and they maintain stock of, of the product. So it just makes sense to me to test it out and to see if you're a candidate for this uh, pillow uh, through your healthcare provider. Uh, I'm Dr. Deed Harrison. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.